This is what flowers look like to us. It only looks like a pretty fragrant flower. But there are people whose flowers are completely different. Because of that, we blossom into a new invisible spirit. She's no longer a flower. Through her, flowers become a unique message. We are seeing nature in a new way and reconciling new meaning with it on a small scale. There is a special artist who saw this special way from the nature. This is Georgia O'Keeffe's story. American artist Georgia O'Keeffe is known for her paintings of flowers, bones, shells, stones, leaves, trees, mountains, and other natural forms. She painted flowers when she was a child growing up in a countryside Wisconsin. O'Keeffe decided to become an artist at the age of 12, and during her long career, she lived to be 99 years old. She made more than 200 paintings of flowers. Some of her favorite subjects were lilacs, daisies, irises, petunias, cella lilies, orchids, sunflowers, roses, and jack in the pulpit. But here is the most important point of this video. It can be said that the flowers she painted are no longer flowers themselves, but a new perspective on nature. In this respect, O'Keeffe's flowers opened up a way for those who paint or view paintings to approach painting objects. O'Keeffe's art teacher first introduced her to a Jack in the Purpose during the lesson. Her teacher pointed out the plant's unique shapes and color variations. The artist recalled, This was the first time I remember examining a flower. She started looking at things, looking very carefully at details. She was certainly the first time my attention was called outline and the color of any growing thing with the idea of drawing or painting it. In 1930, O'Keeffe found a jack in the pulpit in the wood near her summer home at Lake George in upstate New York. She was inspired to create a series of six paintings. These works show the artist's deep interest in the design of nature. The Jack in the Purpet is a North American wildflower found in shady, cool woods and swamps. It can grow from one to three feet tall. The plant's shape begins a sort of a green vase called a spath made from a single leaf. A stalk, or spadix, grows in the middle of it. A leaf hood falls gracefully over the top to protect the uh, tiny flower within the path from the wind and the rain. Typically green with the deep purple or red-brown stripes, the flower blooms from April through June. During the late summer and early autumn, the stalk grows in a cluster of red berries. When you hold the flower in your hand and see it in person, that moment becomes your world. I wanted to show that world to other people, she recalled. Okay, folks, let's take a close look. How this tiny flower can become an amazing abstract masterpiece. Concentrating on a single flower, O'Keeffe contemplates the intricate structure of the Jack in the Purpose. Some of her paintings show curling leaves and the sky, and the others, the flowers that fills the entire canvas. Each painting in the series goes deeper inside the center of the flower, with the last one, only the spadix is seen. O'Keeffe focuses on attention on the flower by magnifying and simplifying its form. Okay, first of all, let's compare the five paintings. Look for similar elements, such as colors, lines, and shapes. If you finish to look at it carefully, let's think about some important elements. What do some of the paintings have in common? What differences do you observe? Which paintings do you find the most intriguing? Then why? Georgia O'Keeffe said once, it is only by the deduction, by elimination, by emphasis, that we get the real meaning of things. Once you have questioned for the paintings, let's try it. Let's give it a try to create a design. One of O'Keeffe's favorite activities was to pick up a seashells as she walked along the beach. She displayed her collections at home in New Mexico, 
and she often drew her favorite shells. By surrounding herself with objects from nature, she could carefully observe the shapes, patterns, colors, and other essential details. Okay, now make a series drawings. Now, if you want to try just like what Okift would do, let's make some series of the drawings. You will need a paper, pencil, colored pencils, crayons, pastel, markers, and for some watercolors. First, select something from nature to study. A flower, leaf, shell, or a stone. Place it on a table and sit nearby with your paper and drawing materials. Examine the objects carefully. Study its color, shapes, patterns, and designs. What makes the object unique? Explore this object in a series of drawings and separate sheets of paper. Try to fill the entire sheet of paper each time as you draw. That's very important. Now, let's experiment with color. Use only a pencil to draw on an object, just a single color. Then, draw it again with colors that are close to the natural objects as possible. Colors. Now, draw the objects with many colors as you like. Just use your imagination. Let's explore some interesting variations of designs. It's quite unique. Draw the entire objects. Then, draw a different view Turn the objects around the side, select just one detail and draw it as if you are looking through a magnifying glass. Enlarge it to the edge of your page. Imagine how the object would look like. Make a drawing showing a um, box size view of objects. Draw the objects in an imaginary landscape. Include the sky, water, land, animals, and all our buildings in your pictures. So what do you think? It's really fun and interesting, right? Until now, we have viewed things like flowers and seashells, which are part of the nature, in this way. However, I learned that through this experimental expression, such wonderful and unexpected abstract works can be created. That's all for today, right? I hope that you will be able to try seeing the nature around you from a new perspective and a method. In the next time, and I'll see you again with the next video. If you liked uh, today's content, please be sure to subscribe and like.